Hello and welcome to Healing Thursday. Da, 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 da. Healing Thursday, Healing Thursday, Healing, Healing, Healing Thursday. I worked all day on that tune. What do you think? That's a weird sound. My stomach makes weird sounds when I sit down. When I'm standing up, my bum makes weird sounds. It's just, I can't win. Now it's a bit of both. Vinny, can't believe you just did that. Whew. So, hello, welcome to uh, me. My name's Jason Newland. My website's jasonnewland.com. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Just let you know that I have a YouTube channel, which you can, well, every time I do these recordings, okay, from now on anyway, but I will be uploading a 10 hour version onto my YouTube channel without music. So you'll have the um, positive, stuff after the recording so affirmations counting down body scan all those kinds of things for for what up to 10 hours so maybe eight and a half hours or nine hours after the recording so you can listen all night long if you want there Okay, what else? Oh yeah, I have a Facebook page, uh, which or Facebook group called Jason Newland's Boring Group. So please join if you if it's only here for people that really enjoy what I do. So it's it's not for the casual listener. It's for people that really, you know, are interested in what I'm doing and use these recordings or videos or whatever regularly because one of the benefits you can get is to ask me questions on there and I do a Q&A Friday every week every Friday in fact and you can actually ask me questions that I can answer on Q&A Friday and the same is this week so I've just posted on there if you've got any questions in fact, if you have any questions, you're also welcome to ask them on here as well, on YouTube. On here, this is everywhere, but on YouTube's another place you could post a question if you want. But the best way to do it is just to join the Facebook group, Jason Newland's Boring Group. Which in some ways isn't the most positive title, is it? But those that listen to me, you, you know what it means. Because we all know I'm really exciting, but... Hey, Vinny. Vinny's been a bit weird. He's been in bed pretty much all day long. The only reason he's in here with me now is because I've closed the door. And whenever I turn the recording equipment on, he comes in there. Like, every single time. And I've closed the door so he can't... Well, hopefully he can't bark at every single door creak outside so let's say what's the latest well I got up this morning you know I normally get up quite early an early riser as it were sometimes I wake up before I wake up if you know what I mean I rise before I rise but uh, today just after four o'clock in the morning, got up out of bed. I edited yesterday's recording, did all that stuff. And I was, I got up too early, to be honest. I was falling asleep doing it. And eventually, uh, I managed to finish it, upload it and decided you know, it's time to then go and have my breakfast so I 
clean because I've got two bowls. This is this is my life. I've got two breakfast bowls. I've got one cup. There's two now, but one's not mine. That's what's her name's, his mum's. So she left it here the other day. Uh, what else have I got? One plate. I don't know how. I used to have, since, since I moved here, I've had two sets of two sets of plates, two sets of cutlery. Like, you know, six dishes, six plates, six little plates, six sauces, six cups. And I just got through them. I don't quite know how. So, so anyway, I wash up the dish that the... I leave the bowl to soak overnight. I usually leave both of them to soak overnight. And then I wash one up. Unless I've already washed it up, then I just, what I do is I rinse it out because I just can't stop myself. I can't pick a dish up and use it or a cup without rinsing it out, even if it's clean. Just, just kind of have to do that. As well as cutlery, have to rinse it under the cold tap. Uh, so, anyway, I boil a kettle, well, I boil the water in the kettle, using the kettle, and then I pour the milk into the bowl, put it into the microwave, because I, I put the, the bowl of milk in the microwave for about two and a half minutes, and that's going to be for my ready brick. Then I go into the bathroom, and at this point I try and put the tea bag in a teacup, well, it's kind of like a mug as blue and I pour the hot water into the kettle into the the cup mug thing so I let that brew while the microwave is you know doing its thing with the milk I then go into the bathroom I clean my teeth I do all that stuff, face wipes and stuff, you know, get all the makeup off. And then I usually hear the ping. So I'm in the bathroom probably, I don't know, four or five minutes. I don't know where the time goes really. So then I come out. Generally I close the door. I leave the light on though because the light, the light switch makes a lot of noise. It's, it's I mean, the bathroom is the most echoiest room, isn't it? I mean, unless you live in a mansion, then I guess all the rooms are echoey. But I don't currently live in a mansion, but it's very echoey. So, and it's because it's so early in the morning, I don't want to disturb the neighbors. So I leave the light on until it's a, a better time to turn it off. I go into the kitchen and I get the milk out of the microwave. I usually you know, keep it in the bowl. It's too hot otherwise. And then I've poured the mic, the, the what's it? No, no, actually, no, 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 no. I put the milk, I get the milk out of the fridge, if unless I've left it out. I pour a little dash of milk into the tea and then I just make the tea and get rid of the tea bag chuck it out the window and then with the spoon I mix in the ready break into the milk then I add some raisins or some dried fruit and then I take it into the bedroom no the bedroom the living room but I do turn the light off in the kitchen because that's just a normal switch I don't know why all the switches aren't just like that well, they are, except the bathroom. Why not just have a switch outside the bathroom, like they do in hotels? Well, some some places have it. Do you reckon it's because families, they realise that if you do that, people turn the light off when you're in the bathroom? Like if you're in a hotel room, someone's not going to do that if you're in there on your own. But if you've got a kid or if you've got someone that's, just be naughty, thinks it's funny, and you're in the dark, in the bath, or in, you know, you can't see what you're doing. 
So maybe that's why they have the, the light in the bathroom. I don't know. Well, on this occasion, and I'm going to the, the, the living room, turn the TV on, I'll check up on the news, or go onto YouTube to see what's new, and I have my breakfast. And then, then I'll probably, after about half an hour, maybe an hour, I'll do the, what's it, the, make the image for the podcast that I've just edited and uploaded. And I will then share it onto Facebook. And usually later on, not straight away, maybe an hour later, maybe a couple of hours later, I will make the video for YouTube and upload that. It's now a bit more time consuming to do the video because I've got the 10 hours long, but it's okay. It's, there's reason behind what I'm doing. All the videos, apart from the archives, in the future will be 10 hours long. That's the plan. And they're all dark screen as well. So the, there's an initial, an initial image. Then it goes to dark screen after 10 seconds. So you can watch on YouTube and not have a glare in your face. So you can listen rather on YouTube. And just be able to listen in your bedroom or without any lights on. And it's just a dark screen. After 10 seconds. So, um, this morning, probably, it's probably gone five o'clock, or maybe it was, no, maybe, maybe it wasn't, I lose track of the time, anyway, I put the, the milk in, so I, I, you know, do the kettle like normal, pour the hot water out onto the, into the cup, with the tea bag in, put the milk into the bowl, put the bowl into the microwave, put it on for two and a half minutes, you know, set it for two and a half minutes. Then I walk into the bathroom and I don't think, I'm not sure if I even got into the bathroom and all the lights went out. And I thought, oh, 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 like, what's going on? First of all, I thought, oh, I've um, tripped the switch or whatever it's called. You know, the fuse is tripped. It's over. Because I had that before with the kettle. It kept tripping the... Is it called tripping the switch? So what I have to do is go into the storage room. And that's where the... I don't know what you call it, the electrical circuitry thing is, and you have to like push the thing up, and it turns everything on again. Now for the first, probably six years of living here, I would go in there, holding my phone up for the light, trying to see what I'm doing, not realizing that actually there's a light on, there's a light in, the storage room which is not connected to the same circuit specifically so you could go in there and turn it on and see what you're doing <laughs> it's it, that only happened because because normally because I've had a few power cuts over the years and I've tripped the switch a few times but on this occasion back then I, I've always, because I've always been in a living room, it's happened or in the kitchen. So I've just gone into the storage room and it's, usually it's been a trip switch. Uh, it's been probably three power cuts, probably previous to this. Anyway, I went into the storage room on that occasion. I was near the front door and the lights went out. So I, I checked the light so I always check the lights, you see. So if I'm in the living room, I check the light. It's not working. Because sometimes it go, it's gone out during the day, so it's, the TV's gone off, like, what's going on? 
or I'd try the the kitchen light or the bathroom light or the bedroom light. But in this occasion, I went in and I tried the the storage room light and it came on and I thought, whoa, that's weird. How come it can't, you know, must be the TV. No, it must be just, I don't know. I just like, it confused me. And I was trying all the other lights and nothing came on. And like, how can that light be on? And none of the other lights are on. So I went into the fuse box. Fuse box, that's it. The box where the fuses are. I guess that should be memorable. And I pushed it up and it came on. I was like, wow, okay, all these years, I mean, it doesn't happen that often, but it has happened quite a few times with a fuse box, probably 20 odd times, maybe more. Anyway, that's when I know the difference between the fuse going and an actual power cut because that the light in that storage room doesn't come on when there's a power cut. And if it's in the night time, the hallway lights are off as well, like outside. So it was a power cut. I couldn't, I'm like, what? A weird time to have a power cut. I mean, you know, there has been times when I've woken up and the, the my, what was it? The, the microwave's flashing and the washing machine lights are on. That happens when there's a power cut because it comes on. It just stays flashing or whatever. So that's yeah. It used to be when I had an electric was it um, a digital clock, you know, with the lights, and it used to end up flashing, and the alarm wouldn't come on. And yeah, so that I haven't had one of them for wow. The last time I can remember having a digital clock. It's 2003. So I used to wake up to the radio. Yeah, the radio used to wake me up when I was working in insurance. And I mean, I might have, no, I think I did have one in 2005, maybe 2007. Unless I, yeah, probably did, yeah. But I remember 2003 waking up and I kept hearing darkness or the darkness song. I believe in a thing called love. I believe in a thing called love. Do, 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 do. That, that song. And it was like, wow. Just really liked the song and just kept waking up to it. So I didn't know what to do. Because it was dark outside, it was dark inside. I do have my torch, so that's handy. Um, over the fence, all the lights were on. Well, the hallway lights, so they weren't affected. Across the road, the lights were on, so they weren't affected. But the, streets, the street lights were off, but the street lights were off anyway after midnight or something, either one o'clock or midnight, because you know, obviously between one and one o'clock after midnight, that's the safest time for people to walk around, isn't it? <laughs> you don't need don't need street lights at that time. That's because that's a, that's the best time for people to walk around. So, um, I didn't know what to do because the, the milk was, it probably had 30 seconds of heat so it wasn't ready. And I thought, even if it was ready, would I sit here in the dark? Eating, I mean, the tea was fine. The cup of tea was very, very well ready. It was, you know, it was made. I just stood here and I thought, well, what I'll do, let's find out if something's going on. You know, just, this is weird. And... Of course, I couldn't use the internet on my phone, which I knew because the electricity, you know, internet is plugged into electricity. However, the data on my phone, on my mobile phone, 
that's got nothing to do with the electricity for this building. Yet, yet, the data would not use, the internet would not work. I couldn't believe it. The, 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 honestly, the internet would not work without the electricity being on. And it made no sense whatsoever. Because even at the moment, I've got the Wi-Fi off. Okay, Wi-Fi off. Bluetooth off. Bluetooth, Bluetooth off. Mobile service on. Roaming off. Personal hotspot off. Okay, all that stuff's off. I go into... So I want to search Google. Say Google... And it comes up, yeah, without the Wi-Fi. But this morning it wouldn't do it for that whole period. And it didn't last long, probably 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, maybe 15. I think I might have got, yeah, I did go outside just to have a look around with my torch. Vinny didn't get up at all. He just stayed asleep, didn't care. And I just couldn't figure out. I thought, uh-uh, <laughs> what's happening? This is very strange. Well, I received, so this was, yeah, so this is, would have been, blimey, probably, let's say 20, uh, 10 past four, 10 past five rather, because I, re I received a message What is this? Received a message at 5.44, which was after the electricity came back. It came back on about 20, 20 to 6, roughly. Power cut alert from UK power networks at 5.44. We're aware of a potential unplanned power cut affecting your area. We, don't, we do not usually contact our customers between 2300 and 0700, but we are sending this message as this number is associated to a property on our priority services or register. Not all customers will be affected by this and you may still have power. If your electricity is off, you can get live updates on the incident through our website. So... It's good that they sent it, so the text was working. I, I was actually just about to phone, because I did. I went to phone the council, because I have a out of our out of hours service, to find out what's going on, and if because they might not have known. It happened before. Uh, it's quite a few years back since it like happened. It was off for quite a while. And I called up the council. They didn't even know. And it's not really a lot they can do, to be fair, but they didn't know. So, like, oh, thanks for letting us know. I said, my pleasure. He said, what are you having for dinner? I said, well, nothing at the moment, because I can't, i got an electric cooker. He said, you should, get a, you should get gas. And you could have had your, you could have had your dinner. I said, yeah, but the gas also use electric, doesn't it, to, to light it. Well, you could use a match, couldn't you? I said, yeah, that doesn't seem very safe these days. I don't know. I mean, that is how we used to do it in the old days. But anyway, I haven't got, I haven't got a gas cooker. I've got an electric cooker. And he said, oh, well. I said, yeah, it's all right for you to say that. I guess you obviously got a gas cooker, have you? He said, no. Well, why are you saying I should have a gas cooker if you haven't got one? He said, well, I haven't got a power cut. <laughs> See ya. It's like a bit rude. So it came back on. I'm. I just have to assume it's something to do with the the weather because it was a very, very stormy morning. Like proper, proper stormy. And it's been on and off all day long, and it was it was 
We even had some thunder and lightning earlier uh, this afternoon. Maybe that's why Vinny's just uh, a bit because of the weather and he just maybe he's affected by the weather. It's possible, I guess, isn't it? It's possible. Can you hear that buzzing sound? It's I'm uploading or downloading, download, no, uploading, no, down, uploading, yeah, I'm uploading a bunch of recordings onto Canva so that I can make some new videos or some old you know, archive videos, but it's coming from the hard drive and the hard drive's really like, like really, it's pedal powered, that's amazing. <sighs> it's crazy, it's the pretty amount of space that that hard drive has. It's an external hard drive. The amount of power or space probably would have taken up multiple rooms 50 years ago. It's isn't it weird, you know? Remember floppy disk, they used to take up, there's like practically no space. Wow. So, I... This is supposed to be healing, not he what's it called? Healing Thursday. Right. I also like to say thank you to... Oh, no. Excuse me. Oh. It's quarter past seven. It's dark outside now. Um, oh yeah, sorry. I'd like to say thank you to Emil for your PayPal gift. Thank you very much. And in case you're wondering, well, I don't know. So I've I've already done kind of a what would have been a healing thursday recording a couple of days ago and i suppose in my own little way i'm kind of trying to incorporate some of that stuff into my recordings anyway and hoping that by listening to these recordings and by slowing down your mind relaxing your body it kind of gives you the chance to Get into that zone. The zone of not just letting go. Very wet mouth. Not just uh, letting go, but opening yourself up to positivity, to the possibility of change positive change just being open to options because I know how easy it can be to feel a little bit fixed sometimes, very, you know, limited, almost as if, well, there's, there's nothing I can do. And sometimes, yeah, there's, there's, there are limits, perhaps physically, there may be limits financially, there may be limits 
emotionally even. At times. But there's gaps. There's spaces. There's times during the day. There's moments where you can allow that that feeling of calm to just be present inside you and maybe to notice it that's kind of what I'm saying really there's something I'll always remember I was in where was I? Nottingham Shire I don't remember what time of the year it was. I think it was spring, maybe autumn. And I was sitting outside on top of a coal bunker. It wasn't high up, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to get on it. But it was high enough for me to sit down and just... There was a bit of breeze coming in. It was a nice day. It wasn't warm. It wasn't hot. But it wasn't, it wasn't cold. It was just a... A standard kind of day but it was very quiet and I just had my eyes closed and this is probably thinking about it possibly late 90s it might have been the early 2000s but I think it was the late 90s and I just felt so relaxed, so comfortable, so peaceful. And I became aware of a certain feeling. And it seemed to connect my body and my mind and my brain as well. It's almost like everything was... A certain feeling that connected everything together. I mean, you could say, yeah, it's your spinal cord, mate. But, you know, this, without being too anatomical, it was a space, and I've talked about it in the past, almost like it's uh, like a bubble or it's a safe room inside yourself. And when I say safe, I just mean somewhere that you're not going to be disturbed emotionally somewhere that you can you almost you just drop your skin to the floor and just the energy of your body walks in or floats in even and it's just peaceful it's like it's almost like there's no body there's no thoughts there's no mind and I'm not talking really spiritual, although I guess it felt a little bit like that, maybe, I don't know. But it's more just a feeling. And I got the sense that that feeling, that place, is a place of healing. I got a feeling of healing. See, little things like that really cheer me up <laughs> being able to rhyme stuff a feeling of healing but it did it just it felt in fact I would say this this I don't perhaps know a word that describes the feeling that might just be my ignorance to the English language but yeah, I know a few words, but none of those words I feel give justice to that or describe correctly that feeling. Because inside there, there is no pain, no physical pain, no emotional pain, no stress, no tension, no worries. There was... 
no matter what was going on outside, it kind of didn't matter. And I've revisited that place many times, many, many times. And there was a time I did it. I mean, you may relate to what I'm saying. I don't know. If you focus inside, maybe there's a, I mean, it might be more a feeling you get when you, perhaps when you hug your child or when you've just had a really, really lovely time doing something that you enjoy. It could it could come at any different time. For me, it's more... It seems to come when I need it. So there was this time back in... Two thousand and... 2011 and I was working as a counsellor but also I needed to find somewhere to live the part time job I had wasn't going so very well so this was round about probably February 2011 and I'd just seen a client and I sat down on this chair, and it was a reclining chair, but it was, it was more like a, it was a very, very comfortable, more like a kind of beach chair. I don't know why I was there, but I completely sunk into it. I, and I went into that place inside, and it was because... I tried to, it just automatically happened. Almost like I needed to. Almost like you needed, you need to sometimes drop everything, let everything go for however long and just go inside, have a rest. I suppose put in trust in yourself, trust in your own ability to heal, perhaps. And it felt so good. Another time back in 2003, I was at college doing a holistic, holistic therapy course a year long course full time working part time in the evenings I didn't have hardly a minute to myself it was just all I was always working or at the course or doing the massages for people you know practicing and it was a little bit too much for me and I left college one lunchtime and just went for a walk and I came across this park, didn't know it's there. And I lay down. It was a nice day. I just lay down on the ground and just melted into the earth, basically. Not literally, but just. I went into that place inside. And I wasn't intending to do that. It just happened. But when I laid down, the earth, it almost, I don't know if anyone gets this, but sometimes when I touch, when I'm, you know, when I'm touching the earth, you know, the ground rather, I've laid down on the ground or even touched a tree. Now don't call me a tree hugger, but there's an energy there that I feel. I've never hugged a tree. I've kissed a few, 
but I've never, you know, held hands, been on dates, but it's something about being close to the the earth, the actual earth itself, not the planet, but, you know, the ground. And a tree is more in contact with the earth than pretty much anything. I say the tree, there's more than one I know. And I remember just laying down, looking at the sky to start with, watching the clouds go by. And closing my eyes. It just felt so relaxing. So peaceful. I didn't want to open my eyes. I just... I wanted to stay in that feeling. But at the same time, it took no effort to be in that feeling. It's almost like... I felt a little bit like I fell into it. Like it was just there. I had no choice but to go into that healing. Because it was time. My body needed it or my mind needed it. Or maybe both. And it was, the f it felt like the first bit of relaxation that I had experienced for a long time. It's weird though when I think about it now even. It relaxes me. Hmm. Yeah. It's just a feeling. But it feels like a safe feeling. To me, it feels like a healing feeling. That also rhymes, doesn't it? It's just kind of like, oh. Because I think when your body, your mind, your brain, maybe your nervous system, everything's kind of on the same page, in touch with that feeling of calm and comfort. And it can only be a good thing. It can only be a positive thing, useful healthy yeah I just thought I'd mention it because I've talked about it a few times not usually with the let me boy to sleep because this is uh, one of those healing Thursdays I wonder if Everybody's got a different feeling. Maybe you have a different way of doing it. Perhaps it's... Maybe you don't need to close your eyes. Maybe you do close your eyes and it just happens naturally. Or perhaps you hadn't noticed it before and it's always been there. Maybe... You're just used to it being there. 
and you automatically go into that feeling and perhaps possibly hadn't given it much thought especially connecting it with healing your body healing your mind because I generally think that anything that calms my mind down calms my body down is it's a healing feeling I think that's going to be the title of this recording a healing feeling but it is it's, it feels right it feels very easy and I guess some people might think when they listen to me that there can't be a lot going on inside my head or why would I need to slow my brain down? Surely I need to, to speed it up. Speed, speed my thoughts up because I'm so slow. But I'll have you know. Yeah, you're probably right actually. No, it's, it's, it's not just about the speed of your thoughts. It's the content, which is probably more important. What's the substance? What's the... Are they negative thoughts? Are they positive thoughts? Because we don't necessarily want to slow down. Well, you might do, but... If it was just positive thoughts going around in your head... It wouldn't be such an issue, possibly. I say possibly because I can't really speak for everyone. I'm not sure how often I have been negatively affected by a positive thought. Do you know? By thinking about something that's good that's going to happen, I generally don't have the feeling of negativity connected to that. I mean, I suppose, you know, there can be times when whatever the feelings are can be a little bit too much. You just need to maybe, some people get overexcited. It doesn't happen to me too often. It can happen. And in the past, it sometimes led, I had such lovely feelings and then it leads to panic because it's kind of, I guess I'm moving towards mania and it gets a little bit too much. But generally feeling nice is a good thing, isn't it? I don't think uh, negative thoughts have really ever made me feel good. I know it's like an obvious statement, like, really? You're telling me when you're thinking negative things towards yourself that it doesn't put you in a good mood? Is that what you're saying? No. Yeah, I know. But I find sometimes being around other people who are feeling emotionally negative has an effect on me 
and I try not to let it but it's because okay I do work on positivity I work on it I work on trying to stay positive that's one of the issues I've had in my life and the opposite to that I mean so that's that's what I've been working on for since the late 90s been trying to work on that and trying to stay upbeat but at the same time also you know being in touch with how I'm feeling I'm not walking around pretending that I'm feeling something I'm not but at the same time trying to get in touch with the nice feelings the you know something to look forward to something to be grateful for those things which and none of that's none of this stuff is my idea but it does work it's very i think it would be very difficult to feel grateful and to feel hateful at the same time Oh, I'm loving these rhymes. Blimey. Grateful and hateful. The, the two don't go together, do they? Can't be grateful and hateful. So, if we can positive, if we, if we can think about something that we're grateful for, and it brings up feelings of gratitude, We already know, don't we, that when we focus on something negative, it brings up negative emotions. I mean, everybody knows that because we've all done it. I've done it loads of times. It used to be my favourite hobby. I didn't realise it was harming me and other people around me, I guess, as well, emotionally. So, well, he's making some weird noise. I've never seen, he's got hiccups while he's asleep. That's so cute. I didn't know anyone could hiccup when they were asleep. He's literally hiccuping. Oh, weird, it's not waking him up. Very strange. Hmm. All right. It's really weird that the hiccups stopped and then he woke up. You are so pretty. Yes, you are. He's still asleep. He's got up and looked around, but he's still asleep. Honestly, just. Um, he might be a little bit under the weather because he spends so much time indoors. Indoors, in the bedroom. Because he's normally, I mean, you know, we don't go out all the time, but he's normally in here with me. Usually, he spends some time on his own, but he normally spends time with me. But today, he hasn't wanted to. Can you imagine how good it would be to be a dog, though? You know, they go to, they... They just go to sleep and enjoy being asleep, don't they? So I suppose the question I do have 
for you is, is there a place that you go to inside? Uh, a feeling? Because uh, I, I remember reading somewhere where it was a therapy book or some some kind of book we got surrounded by that kind of topic and they said oh don't use the word safe space don't use safe space because that could be like construed as being a negative thing But to me, it's not about going somewhere. It's not about um, disassociating yourself. That's not what it's about. It's not disassociation. That's this. If anything, it's the opposite to that. It's bringing everything together. Connecting your mind, your brain, your emotions, your body connecting everything together so that you're you know at one as it were sounds very esoteric but maybe you already have your own place that you go to uh, internally in your mind perhaps it's a, you feel it in a part of your body maybe you feel it in your mind maybe you feel it actually literally in your head perhaps you you notice that your hands relax your feet relax which is a sign that your mind is relaxed. Perhaps when your mind is relaxed, you notice that your stomach is loose. Another sign maybe is if you've got your eyes closed, maybe sometimes I feel it in my eyes. Almost when I got my eyes closed, <laughs> Finney's now deciding to give himself a little bath so a little bit of sound in the background with my eyes closed I look up you know with my eyes my eyelids shut I look up a bit and there's a feeling I get I don't strain I'm not like doing all my energy to look up it's just gently looking up you know there's no prizes I'm not going to win win a balloon but just looking up gently and there's a certain feeling that I get when I do that a gentleness and what I like about relaxing is how the breathing automatically slows down and I've come you know really with the relaxation and stuff I've come from a different direction to a lot of recordings that you may listen to or you may have heard I don't focus really on the breathing the reason for that is because when I started doing this, I was trying to help myself with my uh, anxiety. And when I focused on my breathing, it was, it was the last thing I wanted to focus on, to be honest. So I found a different way in by focusing on my mind, by focusing on different physical parts. But I noticed that as your body relaxes, your mind relaxes. The more your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. You know, standard. But there's a calmness in your brain as well. 
and the breathing slows down. Because all this physical stuff, that's all controlled by your brain, isn't it? Like, it's automatic. So when your breathing slows down, it just shows you that the, the relaxation of your body and the slowing down of your mind has actually had a physical effect on your brain. And if your brain is affected, your spinal cord is also affected. And so is your nervous system. So if your body is affected in a way that slows down and becomes more relaxed, it just has that roll-on effect that calms other parts of your body. I think it's quite nice actually. It's very windy today. I don't mind a little bit of wind, to be honest. <laughs> I like a bit of wind. It's I don't know, it's I just I like nature. I like just I quite like nature. I'm not a huge fan of rain. You know, I think it, it should be it should rain between two and four every day and then just be bright for the rest of the day, you know, just have lots of rain between two and four. But uh it's not realistic, is it? It's not realistic, Vinny. No it isn't. He's just had a sausage. He's very happy. Aren't you, Vin? You a happy you a happy little girl, aren't you? Yes you are. Just had a sausage. Say sausages. Say sausages. So I'm going to go. It doesn't feel like I've been talking for very long, but... If you're listening to this... And it's a 10-hour recording, then it will be... A long recording, obviously. He's very excited now. Now he's at his sausage. He's absolutely invigorated. He's full of energy, aren't you? Hey? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. So I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. Remember, tomorrow is Q&A Friday. Please only listen. I've already done that. Why am I doing a please only listen when you can safely close your eyes? I said that at the beginning, didn't I? I hope I did. Remember to be kind to yourself. Because you do deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye. Relax in a more deep and meaningful way, maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here, not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace, but also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue 
for longer. After the recording is ended. So that you can still benefit from listening to my voice. Maybe in a few hours time. Perhaps tomorrow. And then by listening regularly. Especially if you find. Like some people do. And myself as well. I Sometimes I find one particular recording. That really. Resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again. Like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from... We're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualisation. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was the person's voice relaxed me. It just felt so peaceful, and I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players press the play button in fact it might have even been a tape tape recorder I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized, really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation and I remember my mind would slow down now now I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis and long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006 but I knew I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to.
knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing if if not more so each time you hear my voice you may feel the same some people have been listening to me for over a decade Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back, some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do which you may not realize by listening is when I record these recordings now for example I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing, I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze. Even though they're may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands, I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. And when it comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting in fact at times I've actually fallen asleep
without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. And it's only when I listen back to do the editing, I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is it snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I have noticed more and more that the more relaxed deeper level of comfort you feel the easier your breathing becomes It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. So this allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice ease in which you breathe so naturally Breathe so very easily and smoothly. Whenever I imagine my breathing improving, when I've got my eyes closed, I tend to Visualize a beautiful field 
with trees and flowers. Producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just taking some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. with a joyful heart time seems to just Drip by so very slowly. Completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment. Completely free Noticing that Your mind has slowed down slowed down.
because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy the physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every Heart of your body. Muscles in your legs relax, relax. The feelings, the pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders, deepening in each part of your body further and deeper and deeper In the feelings in the back of your neck, Feelings in your wrists,
muscles in the front of your body. Also, feeling peaceful. a sense of peace spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, your mind becomes even slower. So very slow. stomach peaceful in your stomach Notice how relaxed you now feel. The 
spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. your knees, Spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. Feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body, tips of your toes to your eyes. Peace.
happy to let go. Let go. Completely. Let go. So tranquil. Your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even Enjoying the space, this space of peace and safety.
letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body just to notice forehead and your eyes. So loose. Noticing a sense of complete freedom. Absolute freedom. Peaceful energy.
not have noticed your mind drifting. Peaceful. Blissful peace, blissful peace. Drifting. Total peace. Letting go. body
body feels almost invisible. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. Even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body. And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast. And things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body It's almost as if the parts of your body just open up, allowing the negativity out. And at the same time, replacing that negativity with positive healing energy, which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling a positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of 
comfort. And all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes, maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation, calmness, which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body. And as I focus on each part of your body, you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it. It becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing. And as I move down your body, starting at your head, the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply. And those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds, like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon, can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside. So there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even 
more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely, moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing, calm and loose. As you focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, or your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling more relaxed and calm focus in on your neck the front of your neck and your throat relax in and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck, relaxed and loose and calm. Focus in on the back of your neck, letting go of any tension that may have been there before, and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release that you can experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back, and moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. down to your lower back, and as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. And as those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back. The top of your back, the middle and your lower back. And as you scan, gently 
gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser the muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other separating and almost melting and in your lower back there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort that spreads into your hips so down your lower back and into your hips into the area where your coccyx are and into your buttocks and all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area start to melt start to really let go and even though we're about to focus on your shoulders your back and your spine will continue to let go continue to relax so calmly and as you focus on your shoulders you may notice that they're already feeling really loose they're already feeling calm and they're feeling that those muscles and move from your neck into your shoulders feel so soft and gentle so smooth and calm the feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders that sense of relaxation not just travelling deeply into your muscles also relaxing the bones and moving all the way to underneath your arms relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms healing you feel so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders 
which sends that deep healing message into your arms. And you may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed so deeply relaxed so spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows including your elbows circumference spread all the way into your wrists your forearms and your wrists feeling so heavy yet at the same time so light and gentle Focusing now on your hands, a sense of real peace it just seems to feel so familiar relax deeply feels so 
fingers. fingertips attention to the front of your body, so comfortable, Focus to your legs, muscles in your thighs, your knees, so muscles and your shins completely
so peaceful. So calm. go of everything so I'm going to start counting down now from 20 down to 1 You can imagine in a way it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Eighteen. Seventeen.
sustain. Fourteen. Thirteen.
eight. Six.
As you focus on your eyes, we're going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. 
your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, that whole area that makes up your eye. As we count down from ten down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you will become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. you may find that all you want to do is just drift off to sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that now Focusing on your eyes, I'm going to begin counting down from ten down to one. Right now.
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there, like you 
counting down from 10 to 1. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy? Just because you're counting down? We could try it again. But this time, I'll go a bit slower. This time... As you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs, just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed with every number that I count down. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. And just notice how how you feel generally, how your body feels. It's not necessarily even about counting down from ten to one. It's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. 
the gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and attention falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space now. Ten, nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four. Three, two, How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on your legs. Just your legs. And we're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. And then 
goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may, it may seem to sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC. A bit of love shown. A bit of Acknowledgement, a thank you, gratitude for what our thighs do for us. And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I, surely I should be out in in the garden hugging a tree or something well it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree that's why I'm doing this indoors otherwise I would be outside hugging a tree no I can't see the television from the tree if you move down to your knees Again, such an important part. And I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally if I have a, maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason it's then that I realise how much it does you know the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing that's possibly not appreciated until it's temporarily removed you know that comfort but as you focus on your knees regardless of how your knees feel you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you And you can still have that attention on your thighs. And maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply. As you focus now on the bottoms of your legs, your shins, 
and your calf muscles, and the bones between your knees and your feet, incorporating of course your ankles, so important. You know, anyone that's had even a, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted. And it's kind of strange in a way when you think that, you know, logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms, which is, okay, doesn't, can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up. Our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs. And from a physics perspective, or logical even, it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles, then leading to your feet. That thin area, a thin bone. Yet it does so much great work. Supports us, supports our body for a lifetime. Helps us to balance. Helps you to Get around and be mobile. And there's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles. It didn't seem to do anything. I thought, okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins. There to protect your lower legs. Shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone. Leading, of course, to your ankles and your feet. But we're not going to focus on your feet, we're just going to focus on the legs. I realize that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness. Even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. We've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs and there's that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations of course there's the muscles the big strong muscles that we have in our thighs But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body, can be very sensitive. 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. So all this stuff, it's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, and to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. You could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees. And of course, there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very, feels very nice when you stroke it. And that might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. fold in between your legs, you can just massage with your fingertips, imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue, you can of course feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. And then doing the same for my shins. Massaging and gently stroking the bones. Gently stroking them, healing in a loving way. Because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are. Because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with, 
the idea of having love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs and massage the muscles and the bones and to get your fingers deep in there releasing all tension just to show how much you care about your legs how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly your knees, your calves your ankles the strength of your ankles considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs especially your thighs yet they're so strong so flexible absolutely amazing things your ankles are truly a gift because of what they do for you supporting all that weight regardless of how what weight you are even if you're only eight stone it's still a lot of weight for these little ankles now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone double that yet my ankles support my body all the time although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down as in fact my whole legs do my feet feet also go and my toes clap they're so happy Your legs really are amazing. And I know that talking about talking about your legs is probably possibly the among the most Im, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say, possibly. But boring or not, everything I said is true. Your legs are amazing. Your legs deserve not just respect. They deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. can relax and because the legs are so such a most you know very important part of your body when you relax your legs the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched, even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching, as far as I'm aware that I'm doing, but it's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. going to count down from 10 down to 1 and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed 10 9 8 7 Six, five, four, three, two, one. Relax. So I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represents you feeling karma not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. And as you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as you're body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax 
And the more your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end. The deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. But you can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually relaxing 
each muscle in your body. Effortlessly. And just observing the sensation of letting go. Completely. This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number that you hear me say. Naturally feeling calm and slow and peaceful. Sick. slowed right down sink in deeply into relaxation As you focus on your mind, you may notice that there are 
with some thoughts still there. Maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. So what you can do is Send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love. Like little petals from a flower. Just sprinkle it over them. Petals filled with love towards those thoughts. To let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down for now. So as you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude over those thoughts which will allow them to just melt away and relax deeply with every number those thoughts will become more Starting with number seven.
imagine now. Notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus on your hands. Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. you focus on your hands and your fingers there's nothing needed to be done there's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that it's just noticing focusing on your hands noticing how they feel because the more relaxed your hands feel, the calmer your mind feels, and the more comfort you feel throughout your body. And you Noticed that your mind is starting to drift. In just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation in your hands and fingers more and more relaxed with each number from eight to one, you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your hands and fingers, becoming Drifting. Drifting.
in again. Starting with number Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. And everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all of that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worrying and overthinking and 
anxiety, tension. Just generally thinking about stuff. When you take that away, which is what we do, what we're doing now. You're left with a real sense of peacefulness. Which comes to you very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. It's almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful. Place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself for who you are. A place where you're not trying to please anybody else ever a place where you can actually not just love yourself but in some ways more importantly you can like yourself appreciate who you are sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. healing energy soaking into your body and that healing energy spreads through your veins traveling to each and every single part of your body You start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain, it's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel, not just now, but tomorrow and the next day as your health improves. Not just your physical health, but your mental health. 
things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer have the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before. As you realize that you're the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including of course your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you. Because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life. And you know that you were born as we all were with the ability to fall asleep naturally. We were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try to <laughs> stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try to stop yourself from drifting asleep. The deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep. But it's our birthright. It's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely is not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. It's 
very, very easy to let go. Because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. And when you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive, only a positive way. Opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions that can have such an amazing effect on how you feel right now as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within you that continue to flourish and grow, transforming your life in positive, beautiful way, allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. And this feeling this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness. It just feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be and that positivity grows within you each and every day moving forward to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed and it's not that you're thinking slower it's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity because from now on your mind rejects negativity from now on you're going to start noticing when negativity arises you can just say stop stop and that negativity will 
turn around and leave you alone. Stop. And that negativity would disappear. And as you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just Fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? It feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm all that healing energy spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned, it's barred, it's not allowed entry. It doesn't it doesn't des doesn't deserve to be here, it doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. Which makes room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. Feels nice, doesn't it? To just let go with everything. And I'm going to count down now from twenty down to one. You can continue to relax. And if you choose, you can drift to sleep. With every number you hear me say, you can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now, twenty. Nine, 
routine. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen. Fifteen. Eight, seven, six, five. This is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. To give yourself permission to take a break from everything. And you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind. Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with how you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body Those parts that you focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, 
it's kind of expected. You expect, when you listen to my voice, to feel more relaxed, naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body, your focus increases. which actually calms your mind. And when your mind calms down, your body relaxes. down, your mind relaxes, and even though we've not really started to focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension, healing all the parts of your body including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs inside your body, all of the muscles, all of the fat, all of everything, every hair on your body is filled with that healing energy. brain fills with that healing energy, the feeling of comfort and relaxation increases. in a way that your mind starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy because it's not needed start to drift if that's what's needed so if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation that's what you'll get if what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts, that's also 
by pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, you give permission for your body and your mind, in fact, you give the command to your body and your mind to relax. Deeply and to drift off to sleep if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body. in on a different part of your body, and then you may find yourself drifting, but you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting, and you're alert again to my voice, focusing on a different part of your body starts to relax even deeper because that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone and the more you drift to sleep and that's the last you remember until you wake up in your own time when you experience the right amount of sleep for you because when you do and if you do sleep, it's extremely pleasant, so relaxing, so deep, healing sleep, and it feels so nice. and mind as you, f- as you feel that healing energy spreading through you relaxing you so deeply relaxing you so on your eyes moving down to your jaw shoulders, arms, hands, fingers,
chest. Your stomach. Your back. Your spine. Let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focus in on your fingers. Maybe you could move your fingers a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. Both hands. And even though as you focus on both of your hands now, they almost seem to just melt into one. Where does your right hand start and your left hand end? It's almost as if they just mix together. Focusing on your knees. Just noticing how your knees feel. Now focusing on your elbow. Focusing on both of your elbows. Just observing the feeling of your elbows. in 
physical sensations in your ankles. Now, your toes and both of your feet. Being aware of how your toes feel. to sin. Letting go. Letting go. Letting. go letting go letting I'm going to start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table lying on your front your head is supported your arms are supported and you feel comfortable and the breathing is really easy and you feel You feel confident 
in how you look as well. So there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session. So none of that stuff matters whatsoever. This is about you. This is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. So I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, and I'll move my hands to the side of your head, not pressing but just holding there very gently maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face just so you can feel my hands so you can become accustomed to them and now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can feel my hands gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realise that you're safe and it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and there's a massage the sides of your neck gently Moving from the bottom of your neck, which would be sort of near where your shoulders start, I guess, all the way up to your jaw, your ears kind of area, that side of your neck. Of course, is a lot longer than the front of your neck. Massaging the, the back of your neck, especially that area where perhaps we hold tension, and as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a 
a sense of release in the back of your neck. Maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides I mean this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage even that's not technically the shoulders but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders from the neck and again that can hold tension and stress and when massaged Sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. And you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow my knuckles just to dig in. To get to those muscles and to really relax them. All the time being firm yet gentle with you. And just stroking down that area. To your actual shoulders. Moving to the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just. Pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table. Just to give you a little bit of a stretch. But very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. Again, this is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure. Quite a bit of uh, needing, if, if you wish, to really... Release the tension to really get into those muscles and you can let your fingers in there and make you feel really nice. Sometimes it's just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly it can all be beneficial to the relaxation of the muscles in your shoulders and now as we move down your arms we do one arm at a time Starting with your right arm. What I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up. Just hold it to the side of you. I want it to still be attached. And I just massage the tops of your arms. All the way down to your forearms, into your wrists.
gently massaging that part, the softer part which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside, it's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Just holding your hand in both of my hands. Just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching your fingers ever so lightly. At the same time Pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hands. Just turning the hand gently, stretching it gently. And actually having your hand held can really be an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. You can feel nice and you can feel safe. And as I put that right arm back down where it was, I'm going to do the same with your left arm. Exactly the same. Massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. And then massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. so, so relaxing. So comforting. Now just rest your left arm back down. Start to massage your back, the biggest part of your body. 
starting at the top. Starting again where we've already been, that area at the top, in between your shoulders, near your neck, going back and massaging that area again, but this time moving downwards. Making a downward stroke to the middle of your back. Working from the outside inwards. So massaging the, your back, but the, the outsides of your back. The parts where your arms would maybe rest against. Almost the part that connects your front to your back. And just massaging down firmly but gently, as firm as you want. Moving down. Moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again. Being very gentle. Yet firm as you choose. And eventually we get to the spine. We can massage the muscles on either side of your spine. From the top of your neck all the way down. To your lower back. We can do that a few times. Sometimes people would use the knuckle or the you know two fingers and just go either side of the spine, almost just push down. Go all the way down to the bottom of the spine. Each time releasing tension and opening up the body. Stretching your body. So that you feel more relaxed but at the same time rejuvenated. Now I'm going to move to one side, to your right side. And from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, I'm going to massage that area of your back. I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently and massage and push on one end, that side, all the way to my side. Or to the middle, in fact, to where your spine is. Massaging that side of your spine. The opposite side to where I'm standing. It's almost like kneading bread. There's that big area which is firm, yet. Yeah, Lots there to massage. Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it. You really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged. releases so much from your body that's not useful. Starting a healing process which will continue long after this recording is over. And 
massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do. Because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply. If that's your choice. Then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part of your lower back, kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. It feels so releasing. This is a mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're on your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now we're going to move or we'll move further up to your top of your body. And I'm going to do the same, this time starting with your upper back, put my hands forward over and massage in that area up to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area, the muscle tissue, uh, or whatever fatty tissue even will be possibly from your chest because it's all connected the chest and the back connect together I'm going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine. And then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue with the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing. As gentle or as deep as you choose. Now I'll move all the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine. Then continuing that all the way down, including your lower, your middle of your back. Now I'm going to go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs. Starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. And 
there's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. But that's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint. It's a very sensitive, gentle area. Then working down to your calf muscles. Massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose. Using both hands and fingers digging deep. To your ankles. And the back of your back of your ankles just gently massage in that area. Maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit. Moving to the right foot. Massaging the bottom of your feet and the sides of your feet. Gently but firm enough so they don't tickle. And just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you. As I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, the sides, your arches, your heel. And you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing. Yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle. Stretching your toes gently and massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers each one individually. Moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting at the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides. Massaging deeply and gently that whole area. Working all the way down. And this is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I spend more time on one particular area. As you move down to your calf muscles. Massaging your calf muscles. Firmly and gently. Moving down your ankle and 
onto your feet, massaging the backs of your feet, the bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience when you're having your feet massaged feels really good. Now, as you turn over in your mind, laying on your back, just going to start again at your neck area and your shoulders just to get back in touch with that area and as we move up I can clean my hands, make them more fresh, because now I'm going to massage your face gently. Starting off with your forehead. If your eyes are closed, and I can just stretch your eyes a little bit. Pushing up on your eyebrows. And just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks. Around your ears. Into your jaw. Gently. the sides of your neck, your chin, and then just moving down from your neck down to your chest. Starting by massaging the very top of your chest, where the collarbone is, either side of the collarbone. Then we're just massaging the whole of the chest. Moving the chest around, and because it's quite a large area, you can move from one side to the next, moving my hands from underneath pretty much where your arms are. Stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process. Moving up over your chest. And then moving down again. to just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest, 
and then gradually my hands moving apart and massaging and sliding at the same time moving down to just below your rib cage moving down and then massaging up again giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel completely relaxed remembering that I'm also going to be focusing on your sides as well an area that really doesn't get much attention but feels really good when it's massaged Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body. Or just below your arms, all the way down to your hips. Now, moving to your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. I'm going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side gently massaging from one side to the next moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your belly button. I'm going to move around to the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply. Calmly, you feel loose, you feel free, and there's something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part, because we do have a tendency of holding a different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of. and now massage your stomach the front of your stomach making circles around your belly button and then going the other way around there's a gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. As I now move down the tops of your thighs, the muscles massaging them, and I can do this two legs at the same time, pressing down, massaging deeply, those muscles in your thighs, the front of your thighs. And moving down to your knees, gently massaging your knees. Sliding down your shins, putting pressure on either side of your shin, gently softly but firmly moving down to your ankles 
stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot in each hand, just gently massaging the whole of the foot. The top, the bottom, your heel, your ankle, your toes. Massaging every part of your feet. feels so good just to let go and enjoy the process. Enjoy feeling so deeply relaxed. So much comfort and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin. And you can just lie there for as long as you choose. Enjoying the feeling deep comfort from being massaged by me. Enjoy the feeling deep going to do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred candles. And you're going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. All the way down to one. And each time I say a number. You can imagine that candle in front of you. And I'd like you to actually physically gently blow that candle out. Just so it's not a big Below, it's just a gentle, and that candle will extinguish, and then I'll say the next number as we move down, and you can just blow that one out as well. And as we move down the numbers, you'll find yourself feeling more and more relaxed. And if you need to sleep, you'll also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy. In fact, you may struggle 
to blow out all 100 of these candles. As you feel more and more deeply relaxed, more and more deeply down, the more your mind starts to drift, and you may find that you stop listening to me after a while. background sounds where you are, you'll be aware of those sounds at the moment, you may start to just not even notice them. at all, because they're unimportant, where I am, I've got the sounds of the birds, there's Horace the pigeon, who likes to say hello sometimes, and there's the odd plane that goes by. Maybe traffic and trains in the distance. But none of that seems important whatsoever. you blow out the less important anything is the more candles you blow out the further you seem to move away sounds and from general day to day stuff seems to just move away on its own as you feel number do you hear me say and then you blow that candle out too <sighs> so easy So simple. I'm going to start by in 
introducing the first candle, which is a hundred. First candle, which is one hundred. When you blow that candle out, you'll find immediately a slight change in how you feel. As well as a real sense of positivity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness expanding. with one hundred blow out that candle now ninety-nine Six
one. Jesus.
52. Seventy eight candle seventy seven.
du poil. Sixty four Candle sixty three. Candle 
Fifty-six. Candle fifty four. Fifty two. Fifty. Candle. 
28. Seven.
Total seventeen.
let go of all of those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down. And it's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply and because you've made that decision your body will just follow suit because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. And when you do give your permission, when you give the say so, when you say, okay, it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally, your body just follows. It's almost like a breath of relief. Oh, good, I can now relax. That feeling at the end of a day, of a very physical day that you may experience in the past, where you get home and you just sit down on a chair, maybe you kick your shoes off and, oh, it feels so nice. Knowing that you don't have to get up again. For a little while at least. And if you choose. You can just sit there. For maybe an hour or two. And it feels. Blissful. And just by sitting down. Like that. Your body knows. That it's time to relax. Your body. Has been given permission. From you. Because it's a mindset in your mind, you're prepared to let go of everything.
everything and just completely allow all the stress of your body to evaporate. Any tensions can just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in your body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax. It may seem almost alien. But it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world to let go completely, to relax totally. The most natural thing in the world to allow yourself to feel really calm in your mind and it is almost like a literal unwinding it's like you press a button and all the tension just releases and it's like a wheel like a cog like the inside of a clock just unwinding and it's almost like you could see the the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you would use to wind it up and the energy that frenetic stressful energy gradually winding down losing its power losing its strength as a sense of relaxation becomes stronger and deeper and you may find that the more relaxed you feel that your mind starts to wander maybe you seem to stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realize you're listening to me again and that was just your mind drifting to sleep which is quite natural because sometimes when we're stressed and tense we're not it may not actually be aware of what we need what we physically or emotionally need in this moment but when you allow your body and mind to relax completely and you let go of all thoughts concerns worries ideas all letting them go allowing them to drop onto the floor you start to get in touch with the feelings of such relaxation it feels so nice to be in touch with the calmness of the different body parts as they become looser and looser. Even your breathing seems easier and more natural, effortless. As that cool air enters 
goes through your mouth or nose into your lungs. Breathing in comfort and relaxation. And then just breathing out any excess remaining tension or stress from every part of your body and mind. As you start to focus on your mind, maybe you notice that things are, have come to a standstill, or maybe just much, much slower than before, because your mind is not really needed when listening to my voice. which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body. And that synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and uh, relaxation of your mind lets you know that feeling completely calm, loose and relaxed, really is a great healing experience for you, and has so many positive benefits your body, your mind and your life, to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind, even your bones are relaxed. Muscles are relaxed. Even the skin that covers your body is relaxed. Every starts to feel the benefit of this healing relaxation. And as you focus on the inside of your scalp where your brain is, you can start to realize and notice the benefit of your brain relaxing deeply. And as your brain continues to relax, it sends those messages to the rest of your body and your mind to really relax even more deeply relaxing even more completely letting go of any remaining thoughts or concerns just drop onto the floor because they're no longer necessary in 
this moment, this moment of deep relaxation and calmness, filling your brain with deep, concentrated healing. of your brain, feeling so loose and comfortable, so relaxed and peaceful. ever-increasing sensations of comfort that are spreading throughout your body, relaxing each and every muscle of your body, even deeper. and calm, so very, very peaceful in every part of your body, letting go Peaceful.
body. So you feel amazing, so relaxed, so peaceful, so relaxed and peaceful. do a body scan focusing on firstly how you feel in your body not trying to change how you feel not trying to relax not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension just accepting observing and accepting how you feel in the different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, to notice, to get in touch with how you actually feel in this moment. So we're going to start off Focus in on your hands. Just be aware of your hands. I'd like you to move your hands around. Just maybe move your fingers a little bit. Open and closing your hands very gently. Just so that you can get in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. Very, very slow movements. Focusing now on your feet and if you can just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands maybe turning your ankles moving your feet around moving your toes gently but only very Gently and very slowly, noticing how your feet feel in this moment. Focusing now on your eyes, I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids. Maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes. The muscle changes in your eyes when you do close them. Maybe raising your eyebrows which stretches the tops of your eyes. Perhaps squint in your eyes, scrunching up your eyes, just so you can really get in touch with all aspects of how your eyes feel right now. Focus in on your thighs. And I just ask you to gently tense your thighs. 
just very, very gently, just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs. Noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now. Moving your focus to the back of your neck. Just noticing the back of your neck. The muscles, of course, they lead to the side of your neck. They also lead to the top of your back, which lead to your shoulders. So as you focus on the back of your neck, maybe you can move your head gently upwards, as if you were looking up. Maybe moving your head down as if you were looking down. Perhaps moving your head side to side, right to left. But only very slowly and very gently. Not trying to force anything to be very, very gentle, just so that you can be more in touch with the feelings, with the sensations, the physical sensations of how the back of your neck feels right now. As we now focus on the tops of your arms, the parts where your biceps and your triceps are between your elbow and your shoulders, you focus on those parts, the tops of your arms, you may like to just tense them, but very, very gently and slowly, so you're not straining or putting any pressure whatsoever on your arms, it's just so that you can gain more of a sense of how your upper arms are feeling in this moment, and just noticing as you gently very gently and slowly tighten the muscles and then let go. Notice how the tops of your arms feel. on your stomach, the area, the lower abdomen area below your belly button, moving all the way down to your hips, 
just above your groin. Maybe you are able to tense these muscles in that area very, very gently and slowly. That is a difficult thing to do. Maybe you can just move your body, pushing your stomach up, maybe moving a little bit to the side, using your hips, just so that you can get more in tune with how your lower abdomen area is feeling in this moment. Just noticing the physical sensations of your lower attention to your mouth, noticing your lips and inside your mouth, your teeth, your gums, your tongue. Just noticing how your tongue and your mouth feels. And it may help by moving your tongue around your mouth. Moving it to your left. Maybe pressing it gently against the side of your mouth. And then to the right, gently to the side of your mouth, perhaps pressing up against the, the top of your mouth, and then down gently against the bottom of your mouth, always very slowly. so that you can be aware of how you feel in your mouth area. focus on your wrists, and I'm going to ask you to maybe just rotate your wrists by moving your hands in a circular motion, very Gently and slowly, just so that you can feel the sensations that you are currently experiencing. Experiencing in your wrists, perhaps moving your hands up and down, again very, very gently and slowly. 
just above your hips, where your coccyx are, and a whole area which also really does include the sides of your body, because those muscles are very much connected. Those muscles also move into your hip area, connecting to your buttocks, the sides of your hips. And if you're physically able to do so, Maybe you can very gently just move your body ever so slightly, very slowly, from side to side, just enough for you to gauge how you feel in your lower back. Perhaps you could even move your hips gently. Gently and slowly in order to really be in touch with the physical sensations of your lower back. We now move your attention to your jaw, that area from your chin all the way up to near where your ears are. just, if it's okay to do so, gently open your mouth, not wide, no stretching, just very gently and slowly opening your mouth and then closing your mouth. Gently and slowly. So you can be in touch with how your jaw feels. And now your chest area, and you don't need 
to do anything to move your chest because it moves every time you breathe and it moves very gently and slowly automatically with each breath you take. And as you focus on the, how your chest feels when you breathe. to your forearms and your elbows maybe you are able to very gently and slowly tense the muscles in your forearms do that, you can feel your elbows as well. Gently and softly observing your forearms and elbows focus on the rest of your back, your upper back, and the middle, the middle of your back. This part of your body moves also every time you breathe. You may not notice that. Usually, as you observe. of your back, you can really feel that gentle and slow movement 
to your hip area, your buttocks, your groin, those muscles and those bones in your midsection. Just noticing how your hips feel right now. You can very, very gently. side to side very gently and slowly very very Everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind. And your mind itself just starts to gradually... It doesn't have to be instant, but just gradually starting to, it's almost like time is stretching. It's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. Very small movements which make up the larger movements which is always the case. And when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements. Starting to focus on how your body feels, but not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or 
I'm feeling relaxed and calm. I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. Starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations in your legs, whether pleasurable or not. Maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings. Just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral. Just feelings. Not being particularly concerned, but just noticing what your body is telling you. Feelings in your arms. Instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings of all those different muscles and the skin, the hairs of your arms, the all the internal parts of your arms, the veins. The bones. Just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling Maybe your left wrist also has its own individual physical sensation. What about your forearm on your right arm? Your right forearm. There may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to. It may not feel like anything other than just a feeling. You know, it's there. The feelings in your shoulders. Perhaps your shoulders, when you think about them, kind of almost like they're the same, you know, the same feeling. Almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing. But of course they're not. And when you focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, maybe tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference in each shoulder. your lower back the 
left side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. Of course, that connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of your back. And sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, when I focused on my buttocks, and then I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched. Very gently, but just stretched a little bit, even though I wasn't doing anything to try to stretch your lower back, it just seemed to happen, the feeling of very gently stretching your lower back. Comes along that feeling. In your chest. Just noticing what sensations you are experiencing in your chest right now. And there's so much of the chest Obviously, there's the collarbone leading to the chest. You've got the chest bone. You've got the muscles in your chest. And of course, if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different I might not that different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest, but at the side underneath, it's pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back, as well as breast tissue which stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. Being. With whatever feeling there is. In your chest. What I noticed that I focus on my chest, I feel it in my my back, my upper back. I mean, I guess the obvious reason would be because you know I'm breathing in, and it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. Yeah, it feels, it feels okay. Doesn't feel 
Got a little bit of pain in my right chest. A little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness, possibly. I don't know. I notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason. I think that's probably part of my upper back. That connection between my shoulders and my upper back. Because I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back. Moving the shoulders backwards or up. Which then moves the, I think it's the scapulas. In your back. It feels quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex or stimulate the various muscles in your body gently in order to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, And you do tense a muscle and you let it go and you let it relax. It relaxes way more than it would normally. But you have to feel that you're able to do that. There's no point doing it if there's a uh, an issue with a per part of your body. You need to be gentle with yourself at all times when relaxing deeply. It's important to be kind to yourself. As you notice your mind, how much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording? How calm and peaceful is your mind right now? With nothing to think about and just my voice to listen to. Because you know the intention Behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least, for your mind to slow down as your body continues to relax. Because that's what you want to happen. That's what you expect. To happen. For a relaxed.
relaxation to fill your body maybe calming your mind to the point of boredom when you start maybe to drift away Almost as if you're moving further away from your body and your mind. Just leaving that there. Kind of like in a, an escape pod in a spaceship, a movie space movie, you know, when they get into that little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship. Safe to dream. Continue to relax. Focusing on the feeling of those individual parts of your body that are relaxing one by one. find that every now and then you realize that you weren't listening to my voice because your mind started to imagine 
something different maybe you started to almost move into some kind of a dreamy state and then you become aware of my voice again and even though you may want to focus on my voice you may also wish to allow your mind to just drift naturally into that space of comfort and safety as you feel more comfort spreading through your body like a warm blanket covering you gently keeping your body at just the perfect temperature And even if you can hear background sounds, they just don't seem to matter anymore. As that sense of peace spreads through your mind like a gentle breeze yet strong enough to blow away all negativity strong enough to remove from your mind any anxiety or stress that was there before and blow away any other thoughts or feelings that just don't fit with the sense of relaxation that is filling your body your mind and as you focus on your mind when you count down from ten down to one and with each number you hear your mind will become slightly more relaxed just just slightly so from 10 to nine, just a slight movement, nine down to eight, just another small change in how you feel. Eight down to 
to seven. That feeling is is a gap, almost like a gap that starts to get wider. The gap between those feelings that you used to have in your mind compared to the feelings you have that are growing now. Feelings of comfort and security and confidence. And that gap becomes wider. Eight down to seven, seven down to six. And when you get to five, your mind will start to have a certain physical sensation. Almost like there's a magnet outside of your head sucking the tension and the stress and any remaining feelings that you don't want. Sucking them out through your skull. down to four, you can start to really experience that sense of not just emptiness, but space. A place full of fresh air. A place where you can stretch. It's almost as if as you go down to four and three, your mind is expanding with this sense of peace and tranquility growing. As it moves down to two, when you get to one, Just feels exactly how you want to feel. Almost a perfect feeling. Maybe a, a sensation that you'd like to keep. place that's safe, where nothing can affect you at all. And you can stay in that, that space of comfort and confidence. Confident in your own ability to create this space and this feeling of comfort within your own mind just by counting from ten down to one. And this is something that you can do yourself when you're on your own. time when you can maybe sit down, maybe just for a few minutes, close your eyes, and just count slowly from ten down to one, and re-experience these feelings in your mind. And when you feel that way in your mind, your body copies your mind. And that 
feeling is spread through your spine and your nervous system into every part of your body, travels through your bloodstream, healing and relaxing every particle of your existence. Can, we can practice this a few times before the end of the recording and then you can practice on your own and each time you count from ten down to one the feelings of comfort Calmness and deep, deep relaxation become stronger and deeper. Filling your mind and your brain with these positive chemicals spread throughout your body, relaxing you so quickly, relaxing your whole body and mind so very, very easily, just by counting from ten do it now. I'm going to count from 10 down to 1 and I'd like you to repeat the number after me. So when I say 10, you can just repeat to yourself 10. Just notice, be aware of how you feel. in your mind and your body. Then when I say nine, you can repeat to yourself, nine. Again, noticing the increase in comfort and calmness in your mind and in your body. The same when I say eight, when I say seven, six, when I say five, four, When I say three, two, and lastly when I say one, you can repeat that number now of course when you do this on your own without listening to me, you can say the numbers at whatever speed that you feel is necessary for you, so you can adapt, so if you feel you want to say the numbers 10 down to 1 faster than I do, then go ahead and do that. Or if you feel when you do it yourself that you'd like to have more, more space between the numbers, 
maybe take a lot longer to get from 10 all the way down to 1. That's your choice also to do. get to one, that will be the end of this recording, unless of course you're listening with music, then the music will continue.
20. 19. 18. 17. 16. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. One. Now open your eyes. Noticing how you physically feel. Having counted down from 20 to 1. Allowing stress and tension to leave through your fingertips and your toes and as you focus on your fingertips maybe they feel a little bit tingly which is I suppose quite understanding considering the tension has been exiting your body through your fingertips So now we're going to count from 20 down to 1 again, this time you're going to feel relief of tension and stress, any anxiety that you may have, leaving through your stomach. Just leaving through your stomach, almost as if it's just releasing the whole of your stomach, from your navel to just above your chest, or below your chest rather. So surrounding your belly button area, that whole area, you can feel the tension of your body, whatever's left, just releasing from that area. And you may notice that your stomach will become very relaxed as I count down from 20 down to 1. Now, 20, 19, 18. 17, 16, 15, 14, 13,
can open your eyes again if you choose or you can just keep them closed because it feels relaxing. Just notice how your stomach feels. And notice as you focus, just do a little scan of your body. Just notice how your body feels. Focus in on your upper body, your back, chest, stomach, legs, arms, hands, feet. Just noticing. And you know you may start to feel more of a sense of tiredness, which may be the reason you're listening to this recording, because you would like to let go completely of everything and drift off into a nice, natural, calm, relaxing sleep. So now we're going to focus on your forehead. And if you choose, you can incorporate your eyes in this focus as well. So your forehead and your eyes, just that whole area basically. Almost as if you were wearing a mask, you know, like a, I don't know, Batman mask or something, or I'm trying to think, <laughs> Zorro or something, you know, the kind of mask that covers your eyes, but also covers quite a lot of the forehead. And focusing on that area, because that's the area that we're now going to release tension and stress from your mind your brain, from your mind and any tension that you may have remaining in your face, in your neck, in your jaw, in your eyes, your forehead or your scalp. So basically any tension within your head area, including your mind and your brain. And that's going to be released through your forehead and your eyes. As I count down again from 20 down to 1. Now. 20. 19. 18. 17. 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, Seven, six, five, four, three, two. In. And as you scan your face, your jaw, your eyes, your cheekbones, your ears, your forehead, your scalp, your neck, your back. 
back of your neck, in the front of your neck, the sides of your neck, in your throat. Noticing, being aware of the comfort, the increased feeling of relaxation, not just in your head and neck, so the rest of your body. Just notice how loose and calm you feel and how easily it is to just let go completely. Let go. do now is I want you to focus on the top of your head and we're going to allow every last piece of tension or stress that might be lingering or hiding in your body or mind or head to just sucked out of the top of your head and released into the air and then sucked out into the clouds. Imagine a big cloud above your head, almost like a whirlpool and it's just going to suck that tension out of the top of your head. Just take it away for good. As you focus, imagine an opening in the top of your head where that tension and stress and any remaining issues, maybe worries or concerns that are of no use to you now, can all be sucked out of the top of your head and taken away. As I count down again from 20 down to 1. Now. 20. 19. 18. Seventeen, sixteen, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen. Wow.
physically and mentally feel right now. How peaceful your mind feels. It feels so nice to just let go, to give yourself some space to breathe easily think calmly and just to take a break from all that pointless worry and concerns about things that you don't need to think about right now because this is your time to let go this is your space to enjoy feeling deeply relaxed, peaceful in your mind, relaxed in your body. It can feel so good, so nice to just not have to do anything be able to really enjoy that serenity that comes with letting go completely, that peacefulness that comes with being in this peaceful space. And you can keep this sense of calmness for as long as you choose. If you choose to drift off into a deep, healing, natural sleep, then you can do that. It's completely up to you. You can keep this feeling of calmness physically and in your mind for as long as you choose to feel completely relaxed. Completely relaxed. And I'd like you to make up your mind that you're going to relax. And I want to explore that with you, what it feels like when you actually decide that you're going to relax. Not forcing yourself, but giving yourself that I guess it is a command really, isn't it? When you're telling yourself, relax. In a gentle but firm way that only you can really tell yourself in that way. You can't really have someone else saying to you, now relax. Relax, you know. Um, it needs to be gentle, but you can't, someone else can't really have the same the same kind of influence or power that you have over your own physicality over how you feel because when you say it to yourself it means more it's personal and your brain and your unconscious mind and your body 
listens to what you say. So for example, we'll test it out. We'll do a little test, a few little tests along the way and you can get more of an idea of the force, the positive force that you can have in creating a sense of comfort and relaxation in your body and your mind quite quickly just by you telling yourself to relax. So I want to start by, let's, let's focus on your hands. So focus on your hands and just tell your hands to relax. So just say relax as you focus on your hands. You could say my hands are relaxed or I want my hands to relax. But I think if you actually do it directly by focusing and imagining that your hands can hear what you're saying, you know, like they've got little ears, which is a bit weird. So talking to your hands and just say, relax. Noticing. start to relax. Now focus on your eyes and tell your eyes to relax. So you're just saying the same word, relax. And find the right tone for you. You know, I might say, relax but you you might say relax or relax you know you might say it differently to yourself and that's important for you to gauge what feels right for you so just tell your eyes to relax whilst focusing on your eyes your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyebrows, and just tell your eyes directly, relax now. Now I just did that myself and sometimes you may feel that you need a bit more time for the different parts to relax, you know, because I start talking again and maybe that part hasn't relaxed fully. But what will happen is it will just continue to relax even though I'm talking. And that's happening with my eyes. Something else I noticed is when I started focusing on my eyes, they actually almost became, they got worse before they got better in a way. So sort of I felt a degree of tension growing in my eyes and then disappearing. So I think what that was really was just me becoming more aware of the tension that was already there but I wasn't but I wasn't focusing on it before so I wasn't really acknowledging it or um, really conscious to those feelings is still continuing to relax as well as my hands actually my hands have got a certain kind of energy 
like not buzzing, but I can kind of feel a degree of energy in my hands. Maybe that's where the tension's being released. Maybe that's causing that. The next part, I think we should focus on the back of the neck. That's a part which quite often, uh, well for me, holds tension. I don't know about for yourself, but I think it's quite a, a standard place where tension is sometimes held. So, and I'm, I'm doing exactly what you're doing as you do it as well. So I'm telling my body parts to relax as well. So if you tell your neck, the back of your neck, focus on the back of your neck and just say, relax, in your own words, in your own tone, in your own voice. You can say out loud or you can just say it to yourself internally, but you're focusing and you're saying it literally to the back of your neck as if the back of your neck can actually hear what you're saying. So do that now, just say, relax to the back of your neck, and I'll do the same. Now what I noticed, and you may have had a similar thing, is even though I was focusing on the back of my neck, other parts started to, I don't know, show themselves to me or maybe because they want to be relaxed as well, but I started noticing the feelings in my shoulders, the tension in my shoulders and in my upper back. Whether that was because my my back and my neck was saying, well, I'm pretty much okay. It's the other parts that need attention. But my lower, my, my back and my neck is still relaxing. But I just became more aware of other parts that needed attention now this might happen and it's not it doesn't mean that it's going wrong it just means you're being notified of more places that also want to feel relaxed so I'm going to focus on my upper back so you can do the same even if you don't have any uh, feelings of tension that are obvious in your upper back. If you just focus on your back and the whole area from your shoulder blades down to the middle of your back, down your spine. And with me, it's more the shoulder blades that are more. Yeah, that's the parts that are really sort of uh, giving me the nod that it needs relaxing. So I'm just going to ask that part to relax. And you can do the same now. Relax your upper back. something strange happened there and this often happens I've been doing this for what, 16 years or something and often 
I don't know why I'm surprised, but amazed really that it can be a feeling. So when I was focusing on the back of my neck, my upper back was starting to feel quite stressed and in need of attention. As soon as I started talking to you about my upper back and talking about, you know, getting ready to ask the upper back to relax, my upper back already started to relax. It's almost as if it doesn't need to hear the words, just needs the attention. Just needs to be noticed. That is something that often happens in this type of situation is when you start to relax a couple of parts of your body as we've done with our hands our eyes and our eyelids and now back of the neck top of the back upper back the rest of the body seems to just take notice and decide in its own way to start relaxing. Other parts of your body start to just become looser. I suppose it's kind of like a bit of an avalanche, you know. The little ball starts rolling and before you know it, the whole of your body is completely relaxed and calm. And if you focus on your face, you focus on your eyes, your eyelids, your eyebrows and the muscles around your eyes. Maybe you start to notice that your forehead is more relaxed than it was. Maybe your face is more relaxed. I would say my entire face is a lot more relaxed than it was. So we're going to focus now on your shoulders. Again, just like before, just tell your shoulders. I mean, you, you can do them individually. You can do right shoulder, left shoulder. I just generally do both at the same time. And just tell your shoulders as you focus on them in your mind. Focus on how they feel. Maybe you can see them in your mind's eye. And just tell your shoulders... To relax. Feels nice as they relax. But I do notice, probably especially with my back, is the connection between the different parts the back, the shoulders, the neck.
being all connected and being such a, a large part of your body. It's almost hard to separate them from each other. And my lower back has started to relax on its own. Maybe I'm going too slow. And that could be an issue because we all go at different speeds and the idea at the beginning of this recording was for you to be able to just say to yourself relax without focusing on any particular part of your body because when you know that telling your hands to relax and your hands relax you tell your eyelids and your eyes the muscles around your eyes and your eyebrows to relax and they relax you tell the back of your neck to relax and it relaxes tell your upper back to relax and it relaxes you tell your shoulders to relax and they relax told your hands to relax they relaxed and they continued to relax and you told your eyelids the muscles around your eyes your eyebrows to relax they relaxed and continued to relax then you told the back of your neck to focus on the back of your neck and told it to relax it relaxed and continued to relax You told your upper back to relax. It relaxed and continued to relax. As with your shoulders, you told your shoulders to relax and your Shoulders relaxed and continued to relax. And it's not just that. 
it's that the rest of your body has also been listening and that relaxation has been spreading so from your eyes the relaxation spread to your forehead around your face into your skin into your jaw to the front and sides of your neck, all the way down your chest and stomach. Your relaxed hands and shoulders meet up through your arms, relaxing your forearms, your upper arms, your elbows, your wrists. Letting go. Your lower back. Your hips, buttocks, groin. All just start to relax or continue. Even more comfort. Spreading through your legs. all the way down to your ankles, the tops of your feet, the sides of your feet, and the bottoms of your feet, relaxing into your toes, each toe Calm, loose, and as your body relaxes more, your mind becomes. Slower, more peaceful, to the point where if you choose to fall asleep, easily do that. Easily drift away. Because there's nothing going on in your mind. Your brain is peaceful. body continues to relax between your body relaxing and the word that you say to yourself relax means that you don't need to focus on just one part you can just focus on your entire body word relax and 
relatives, uh, those familiar sensations of comfort spreading throughout your body. Loosening and calming and healing every part of your body. Feeling more relaxed. So all you need to do from now on is just tell yourself. Starting now with number 20. Nineteen. Eighteen. Seventeen, sixteen, Fifteen, fourteen. Thirteen,
seven.
body has slowed down, the muscles are more relaxed, everything is calmer, as a cat say the word relax after each number and every time you hear that word relax you will feel twice as calm muscles in your body will feel twice as relaxed Starting 